Many Americans have swallowed the tale that China's undergoing some sort of economic miracle, led by the unique ideas of Deng Xiaoping embracing free market reforms and the progressive policies of current leaders like Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao. Our memories of the atrocities of Tiananmen have been swept away by a brilliant Olympics on TV. And when you're standing in Shanghai on the boon looking across the river at the daring night skyline of Pudong, it is hard to see China as anything but a positive, forward-thinking society ready to take a great lead in world affairs. Frankly, nothing could be further from the truth, and that's the story that Death by China tells. The frightening reality is that under the carefully orchestrated Disneyland version of China that you see lies a complex society ruled by fear, racked by inflation, and bubbling with class and regional discontents. It's all held together by an authoritarian state led by a cadre of Communist Party thugs who use stability as an excuse to hold on to privilege and power. As the influence of this corrupt regime expands, we should all be concerned. We should be very concerned. Now, to be honest, most of the Chinese people you're likely to meet are benefiting from the current situation, as are many of America's top pundits, business leaders, and politicians. And they aren't about to tell you what's going on. They don't want to know themselves. They sweep it under the carpet and they take you out for another great dinner and a lot of drinks. So when China takes some Uyghur protester, artist, religious leader, or Nobel Prize winner and throws them into a labor camp, our China apologists continue as if we were describing some civilized society. Death by China is here to break that code of silence. Much of corporate America now is simply paying lip service to free markets while profiting from the exploitation of Chinese labor. Labor kept cheap by a police state that bust unions and bust heads. Our CEOs and shareholders are benefiting from the wanton destruction of China's environment and from the innumerable ways that China cheats America and the world in trade. However, they can no longer hide the fact that the long-term benefits of this so-called free trade with a most unfree partner have not accrued to all nations. Real wages in the U.S. have been dead flat since China joined the WTO in 2001. And unemployment has reached a level of perniciousness that even the most gargantuan stimulus package can't stop. The low-pay, no benny service sector jobs selling Chinese goods to other Americans that are now being created will never support a family the way our lost manufacturing sector did. It's a story of an unethical trading partner using counterfeiting, industrial espionage, and the outright theft of everything from iPhone designs and Harry Potter films to high-tech military and space technology. When American firms try to ship their goods to China, they're blocked by this great wall of protectionism that includes everything from outright tariffs to forced partnerships, domestic content requirements, and forced technology transfers. All of this happens in the context of a blatantly manipulated currency that puts a 40% tax on American products while subsidizing China's exports. The authoritarian regime in Beijing is the enemy of world trade and economic freedom, not its poster child. Death by China documents how every cart full of Chinese goods, some of which are downright deadly, is another job lost not just in St. Louis and in Portland, but also in Kyoto, Paris, and Manchester. That's because China's threat isn't limited to just China or America. So we explore China's new imperial adventures in Africa and Latin America, where naive trade agreements bring in cheap Chinese goods that destroy textile and other high-value jobs and ship all those countries' precious raw materials off to Guangzhou. China moves up the value chain on the backs of its slave labor and workers around the world are left with low-paying extraction jobs or nothing at all. If all this weren't bad enough, we close with a look at exactly where the Chinese government is spending its ill-gotten profit. And not surprisingly, it isn't on health care or retirement plans for its workers. This military budget that outpaces its breakneck GDP. Our trading partner is preparing to kill us and to push the U.S. out of its role as peacekeeper of the Pacific so that it can have its way with Taiwan, Japan, Korea, India, and Vietnam. Death by China covers the Dragon's fearsome new arsenal from the emerging fleet of aircraft carriers and nuclear-armed submarines to the stealth fighters and space weaponry.